In this video we are going to talk about Intel stock. So before starting please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Intel Corporation is a global technology company that develops, manufactures, and distributes cloud, smart, and connected device technologies for retail, industrial, and consumer applications. DCG, IOTG, Mobileye, NSG, PSG, CCG, and all other are the company's segments. Platform products, such as central processor units and chipsets, as well as system-on-chip and multi-chip packages, are available, as well as non-platform or adjacent products, such as accelerators, boards and systems, connection devices, and memory and storage goods. Computer vision and machine learning-based sensing, data analysis, localization, mapping, and driving policy technology are among the company's Internet of Things products, which include high-performance computer solutions for targeted verticals and embedded applications, as well as computer vision and machine learning-based sensing, data analysis, localization, mapping, and driving policy technology. Original equipment manufacturers, original design manufacturers, and cloud service providers are all served by it. Intel Corporation has formed a strategic agreement with Mila to develop and utilize artificial intelligence approaches for improving drug discovery. The company's headquarters are in Santa Clara, California, where it was formed in 1968. When Intel, NASDAQ, INTC, hired a new CEO in February, several investors wondered if the stock was now a good buy. Intel used to lead the PC semiconductor chip industry, but due to managerial mistakes and a drop in PC sales, the business now behind both Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing NYSE, TSM, and TSMC's client advanced micro devices, NASDAQ, AMD. Intel has made some big measures under CEO Pat Gelsinger that could pave the path for the company to reclaim the top rank in semiconductor production, but there are also signs that investors will need to be patient if they want this chip stock to make that leap. The competitive advantage of Intel. At first glance, Intel does not appear to be significantly better than its competitors. TSMC is likely to build a quicker device than the 7 nanometers semiconductor it currently sells in the near future. This comes at a time when Intel is struggling to advance beyond 10 nanometers chips without the support of TSMC. A semiconductor wafer being scrutinized by a fab worker. That isn't to imply that its competitive edge won't improve in the near future. For one thing, with Gelsinger as CEO, the corporation is now again led by someone with an engineering background. This might refocus Intel's efforts on establishing a technological advantage. Intel seems resigned to outsourcing manufacturing to TSMC under the previous CEO. Gelsinger, on the other hand, appears committed to restoring Intel's foundries, committing $20 billion to increase the company's manufacturing capacity. Furthermore, unlike AMD and other fabless firms, Intel does not outsource the majority of its manufacturing to TSMC, Samsung, or other fabs. Because Intel operates foundries in the United States, this could provide it an advantage in the long run. According to TrendForce, Taiwan today produces almost two-thirds of all chips produced worldwide. Taiwan's semiconductor sector is exposed to geopolitical influences outside its control, since it has faced direct challenges from China. In order to do this, Gelsinger and other business leaders have pressed the Biden administration for government subsidies to help resurrect the domestic semiconductor industry. Intel owns more fabs in the United States than any other corporation, giving it a distinct advantage if the political situation in Taiwan worsens. The current geopolitical crisis, as well as a severe chip scarcity, may give capital for technological advancements, which Intel has already begun. With a chip development cycle of three to five years, investors will have to wait a long time to see if Intel can catch TSMC. Despite this, AMD made a return in the mid-2010s, when many analysts predicted it would never return. Investors should not believe that such a performance will never be repeated. Financials and valuation The good news for investors is that Intel's current crisis has been included into its stock price. Intel is currently valued at around 13 times its current earnings. This is significantly lower than AMD and TSMC which have P-E ratios of 35 and 33, respectively. As a result, several analysts consider Intel as a bargain turnaround bet. Those considering a long position in the stock should be aware that the valuation looks to mirror the company's growth rate. 
Due to increased demand for chips during the epidemic, Intel's sales temporarily increased. In 2020, it recorded revenue of $78 billion, an increase of 8% over 2019. The increase in revenue did not, however, trickle down to the bottom line. Revenue declined 1% from year-ago levels in both the fourth quarter of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021, according to Generally Accepted Accounting Standards GAAP. In the first quarter of 2021, net income fell by 41% to $3.4 billion, compared to the same time in the previous year. Investors should be aware that growing sales costs would have resulted in a minor drop in net income. Despite this, Intel incurred a $2.2 billion restructuring charge in March after losing a patent infringement lawsuit against VLSI. Furthermore, the business expects $77 billion in revenue in fiscal 2021, down 1% 1 from 2020. This could help to explain why Intel's stock price has dropped by around 7% in the last year. Also, if Intel generates $10.5 billion in free cash flow in 2021, it will be less than half of the $21.5 billion it generated in 2020. However, in 2021, the business expects to spend between $19 billion and $20 billion on capital expenditures. This is significantly higher than the $14.3 billion set aside for capital expenditures in 2020, a development that could benefit the stock in the long run. What's the matter with Intel? The company's production process changes aren't progressing smoothly, which is the fundamental cause for Intel's poor performance in recent months. In the past, Intel's in-house manufacturing lines have consistently outperformed rivals and third-party chip makers. This advantage has helped advanced micro devices, NASDAQ, AMD, NVIDIA, NASDAQ, NVDA, Qualcomm, NASDAQ, QCOM, and Samsung to deliver next-generation devices ahead of the competition. More improved chip-making technologies can result in more powerful CPUs while also saving money. Intel's previous two production improvements have been difficult and time-consuming, allowing the aforementioned competitors to turn the tables in recent months and fight from a stronger position. AMD is stealing Intel's lunch in the data center, according to critics, while Nvidia and Qualcomm are making gains in Chipzilla's other strongholds, such as high-speed networking and automotive computing. A new development. This week, Intel may have flipped the tide in its favor. The shift won't happen overnight, but the chipmaker has undoubtedly sown the seeds of something new. Sure, as Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger said on Tuesday, Anyone may label 2021, a transitional year, and predict better days ahead. It's also simple to raise the company's financial guidance for this fiscal year. Earnings may be manipulated, and talk is cheap. Intel, on the other hand, is putting its money where Gelsinger's mouth is. Not only is the business seeing higher demand for its data center and PC CPUs than predicted, but it's also investing $20 billion in new manufacturing facilities in the Arizona desert. The new facilities will be utilized in part as a foundry by Gelsinger and his management team, who are so confident in Intel's return to the forefront of manufacturing technology. In other words, Intel will sell its ostensibly world-class chip making services to others. A technician wearing a mask and wearing goggles inspects a semiconductor chip. Money talks. Although $20 billion isn't cheap, Intel can afford a substantial infrastructure investment. In 2020, the company earned $21 billion in free cash flow and had $18 billion in cash equivalents at the end of the year. Even if it requires a large capital expenditure, this is the appropriate time to put more resources into beefing up Intel's technical infrastructure. Intel's shares are trading at just 12.6 times trailing profits and 16 times free cash flows as market makers wait for proof that it can pull this off. I believe Intel will make the most of its $20 billion investment in chip facilities in Arizona. When all is said and done, today's Intel pricing will be remembered as a terrific buying opportunity. I believe you should take advantage of the current stock prices that are significantly reduced. Is it a good idea to invest in Intel stock? Intel stock appears to be speculative, given the promised investments and stagnant financials. In the company's advantage, Gelsinger's goal to revitalize Intel as well as increasing capital investment, provide optimism, especially when paired with the company's low P.E. ratio. Revenue, income, and free cash flow metrics, on the other hand, continue to point in the wrong direction. 
Furthermore, it will take years to determine whether Gelsinger's current moves will aid Intel's long-term revival. Given the uncertainties, investors should proceed with caution, if at all. What are your thoughts on our video? Please let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear from me again, please subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thank you for watching us.